Hi, my name is Irene with Aquarium Co-op. And when I was starting my first fish tank, I, you know, did my due diligence. I researched online to see what supplies I was gonna need. And immediately, the first article that comes up is like, oh, you think you're getting fish today? Wrong. You need to cycle your tank first. And I was like, what? If you haven't seen it already, Corey has this amazing video explaining what the aquarium nitrogen cycle is using M&Ms as an analogy. But basically at a very high level, when you feed your fish food, they're gonna poop in the water, which creates a ammonia and that is very toxic to fish. So thankfully nature has an elegant solution of using biological filtration, using biological things like beneficial bacteria and live aquatic plants to consume those toxic compounds and make the water purified and safe for fish to live in. Now, unfortunately, a newly set up aquarium has none of these things. And so that's why you need to cycle your aquarium or basically grow some beneficial bacteria and live plants before you add any animals. Now, if you look on the internet, there are like tons of ways to cycle an aquarium. There's fish lists versus fish in cycling. There's using live aquarium plants, bacteria in a bottle. I personally like to use multiple methods just so I can cycle my tank faster. And if I was gonna start a tank today, here's what I would do. Step one, we're gonna seed the tank with beneficial bacteria. Now, a lot of people like to use, there's been a popular method called fish less cycling because it's safer to do it without fish and it involves putting fish food or pure ammonia or other kind of organic source in the tank to break down and basically grow beneficial bacteria. The problem is after having helped like countless numbers of people in the aquarium hobby, we've just seen again and again that many new fish keepers are unable to successfully complete this process. I mean, I'll admit I tried this as a beginner and I definitely failed. So instead what I do nowadays is I actually run a second sponge filter in one of my aquariums. I have it running for months and months and months. And then whenever I need to set up a new tank, I just grab that gunky sponge filter that's full of fish waste and other organics and I put it in my new tank and it's just chock full of beneficial bacteria to seed that tank. Now, if you are starting your first tank and you don't have this luxury, I would find a, another fish keeping friend or maybe your local fish store and beg them for some used filter media or maybe some substrate. Just grab a big old gunky handful of it and bring it over again to that new tank to seed it. If you're really unlucky and you have no fish keeping friends, no local fish store nearby, then your another option is to use live nitrifying bacteria in a bottle. So something like Fritz Zyme 7. And I'll admit, even though I use the gunky sponge filter method, I actually still dump a bunch of Fritz Zyme 7 in the water just so I'm starting off with like a bigger population of beneficial bacteria. And again, it just speeds up the cycling process in general. Bottom line, you just need some kind of source of beneficial bacteria to seed the tank or else it's going to take a really, really long time, like forever. Step two is to add some live aquarium plants. Plants are great because they too consume nitrogen waste and in some cases even more effectively than beneficial bacteria, according to microbiologist Diana Wallstad. And they look really beautiful. So, you know, nobody likes looking at an empty tank with no fish. If I put plants in it, I have something else to focus on growing and raising in the meanwhile. Now, if you've never set up a planted tank before, I actually have a video over here on how to set up your first one, but basically you're gonna need some some lighting, some fertilizer, and then for some plants, substrate. To increase my biological filtration as quickly as possible, I like to use fast growing plants because they tend to consume nitrogen waste a lot more quickly. And in fact, honestly, my favorite plant to cycle with would be floating water sprite because at least in its floating form, you're not gonna have to worry about substrate and all you have to do is kind of dose a few squirts of easy green all-in-one fertilizer and try to keep it around the 20 to 25 PPM nitrate range. So get some water test strips over here. And whenever the plant consumes it, it drops below 25 PPM, then I add a few more squirts and that's about it. I personally usually like to set up low tech aquariums that don't require CO2 injection. So it might take them a couple of weeks for my plants to start getting used to their new environment. But by the four week mark, I would say they're really starting to grow gangbusters and able to handle a decent amount of nitrogen waste. Step three, let's add some fish. Usually about a month after I've added the beneficial bacteria and the plants is when I start feeling comfortable adding a few fish at first to test the waters. 
pun intended. So let's say I was going to put a tank with, you know, a honey garami up top, neon tetras in the middle, and coolie loaches down below. In my case, I know that coolie loaches are probably the hardiest out of all those fish. I want to put those fish in first. Now, if you don't know which fish in your stocking list is the hardiest, definitely ask your local fish store employees or post a question on our aquarium co-op forum link right here. Probably for the first couple of weeks at least, I'm gonna feed the fish pretty lightly just to test the cycle and make sure it can handle the bio load. So what that means is I'm going to be testing every day or two ammonia and nitrite just to make sure both of them are zero ppm or parts per million. If I detect any traces of either ammonia or nitrite, I'm definitely gonna do a partial water change to remove those toxic waste compounds and then add new, fresh, clean water in for the tank so that they're safe. Once I'm able to feed my fish normal amounts of food for like, let's say a week with you know zero ppm ammonia and zero ppm nitrite, then I can probably start thinking about adding a few more fish with of course some wait time in between each batch because I wanna make sure that biological filtration can definitely keep up with the new increased bio load. Now, the reason why I didn't say, congratulations, your tank is cycled is, well, um, an aquarium is a living ecosystem, so that may change. For example, if you suddenly dump a ton of fish or a ton of fish food in the aquarium, you might see a spike in ammonia and nitrite because the bacteria and the plants couldn't handle it. Same thing if you take away some of the biological filtration. Maybe you pruned a bunch of the plants or you dosed a medication that killed off a bunch of the bacteria. Same thing as well. You might lose the cycle. Now, usually you can't see the toxic chemicals in the water, so the only way you'd be able to detect them would be measuring with water test strips or if you see fish are actually acting ill. But there are some cases where you can actually visibly see it there's a problem with the cycle and that's when there's a bacterial bloom. Basically the beneficial bacteria senses an excess in nutrients in the tank and goes, wee, let's multiply. <laughs> and then the water becomes all cloudy, kind of looks like somebody dumped a bunch of diluted milk in the water. And that is because of the population boom. I know the haziness is really unattractive. There's really nothing you can do about it except to let the bacteria reestablish itself. So I would not do a water change in that case unless you detect uh, trace amounts of ammonia or nitrite. Now, if you wanna know the reason between a cycled versus a seasoned tank, you gotta check out this video over here because Corey is gonna to try to convince you why seasoning a tank is better than cycling and why algae is not necessarily a bad thing for your aquarium. Enjoy Nature Daily and I'll see you next time.